The Arctic Circle, a Japanese whaling ship, is cresting waves during a storm. The crew is terrified, but they are criminals. These are bad, bad people. Waves and storm and water, people holding on for their lives, and they see something moving through the storm up ahead. Is that a bird? No, it's a plane. No, it's an anchor. Their own anchor comes crashing through the bridge, turning the pilot into raspberry jam. There's something on the boat. It came out of the water. Is it a man? It moves faster than a man can move. This thing is Michael Myers meets the predator. It's tearing whalers in half. It's ripping people's heads off. It's ripping off arms and then putting them through other whalers until the ship is entirely on fire and goes sinking beneath the waves. It's been one year since the events of American Alien Issue 7, where Lobo fought Superman in Metropolis. Superman has gone from an American phenomena to a global news focus. People are saying Superman was created by the government. Other people think he's the Messiah. Other people think he's from space and he lives on the moon. Get that, like Superman's an alien? What are these people on the internet thinking? Conspiracies are everywhere and they're being made steadily worse by the fact that more of these people are appearing around America. You now have this blur in Coast City that people are calling the Flash. No one knows if it's a human or a force of nature. And then you have that thing in Gotham. And that thing in Gotham is actually worth talking about because a cultural phenomena is happening on a microcosmic scale in Gotham City. You see, crime is changing. A domestic terrorist calling himself the Joker has committed four large-scale acts of destruction. The first two were like weird gimmick bank heists, except the heists stopped, and the last two were a little bit darker. One of them involved poisoning people. The next one involved a gas that drove people insane. This guy is not a normal criminal. And yet, at his nationally televised trial, he was found not guilty by reason of insanity by 10 different psychiatrists. This man has a body count of 48, and instead of going to prison or death row or some government black site, he's been sent to Arkham Asylum, Gotham's defunct and antique madhouse. This is a place that is not equipped to hold a criminal like the Joker, and yet more and more of the criminals in Gotham are being found not guilty by reason of insanity and sent to Arkham. And then they get back out and they kill more people and the circle goes around. Even more crazy, these super villains universally identify the thing that attacked them as a magical vampire that drives a tank. Harvey Dent, the beloved district attorney of Gotham City, was burned, went insane, and then killed about half of the Falcone crime family. The fact that he now claims to have been stopped by this thing, the Batman, isn't doing a lot of good for public trust. There's a national movement towards mistrust in not only the police, but the entire American justice system. If these super criminals can just go to a fucking insane asylum every time they murder someone, where the fuck is the justice? At the forefront of the public discussion around superheroes is of course, Superman. And who always covers Superman? Lois Lane. This issue being brought into a national spotlight has turned Lois Lane from a diligent reporter into a national celebrity. Lois Lane is fascinated by the Batman. She's moved on from Superman, but that's primarily because Superman has only made two public appearances since his fight with Lobo in Metropolis. Where did Superman go? People thought he was the Messiah, and yet he's nowhere to be fucking found. What happened? Everyone on Earth is asking the question, where is Superman? Meanwhile, in Metropolis, uh, Lois, so I know you said you wanted the almond milk in the matcha latte, but they said they didn't have almond milk. So I got you the soy milk. Clark, I said I wanted oat milk in the latte. Yes, Lois, that's right. Oat milk, which is, okay, I fucked up and I'll be right back. You see, Clark is at the bottom of the totem pole at the Daily Planet. 
The fact that he got injured in the big fight between Superman and the alien has not earned him any friends, especially because he didn't get any footage, he didn't do any reporting, he just got fucked up and went to the hospital. And at a place as cutthroat as the Daily Planet, if you're on the ground next to Superman, you're supposed to have gotten like one picture. Lois is worried about Clark. He seems distant. He seems like he's keeping secrets. He also keeps talking about like, hey, what if I grew my hair out long? Do you think it would look good if I grew my hair out long? Lois is like, no, that would look bad, Clark. Besides, she has bigger things to deal with than her doofus boyfriend. Her and Jimmy Olsen are doing a massive expose piece on the rise in white collar crime in Metropolis ever since the first appearance of Superman. You see, violent crime has gone woo, way down because they don't want to get punched by God. But all the little Bernie Madoff type stuff has coagulated in Metropolis's Wall Street because Superman doesn't do white collar crime. Lois has done a few big expose pieces on Lex Luthor and his very, 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 very cutthroat business practices. But those just don't get the same readership as Superman stories. And as the Daily Planet struggles with the conversion from print to digital, they really can't be reporting on boring stuff, which is why Lois is preparing a big piece on Batman. Clark, meanwhile, is doing a little piece on Dick Grayson, who's the ward of Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is this billionaire, lives in Gotham, not a terrifically interesting guy, but kind of an interesting history. And his son, Dick Grayson, is sexy, cool. I'm sorry, did I say son? I meant ward. I meant ward because Bruce never publicly identifies Dick Grayson as his son. Dick Grayson is actually a child of tragedy, like Bruce Wayne. His parents were murdered by criminals. And the narrative of, look at this billionaire taking in this tragic orphan, I mean, it's juicy. And so the Daily Planet is really excited to get Clark's reporting on this. The thing is, Clark hasn't really been doing much good reporting. He's been traveling a lot with Dick, but not actually putting a lot of, you know, words on the page. This is a problem since his job is reporter, but Clark has been increasingly absent, constantly saying he's sick or needs to travel. And his relationship with Lois, this is steadily causing more and more stress. Lois is a serious person. She can't have a flaky goober boyfriend who's not even good at his job. So after the Arctic Circle, let's go to Qatar. Ale, ale, ale. Uh, not that though. Something not that, but you know the vibe of the ale. An old, creepy human trafficker is meeting with a whole consortium of real bad types. It's like the room in Taken. They line up a bunch of girls trafficked from other countries, and the dealer says to the old, creepy boss, he says, which one do you want? And the old, creepy boss says, I'll take them all. The dealer says, you know, when someone says, I'll take them all, uh, it either means money is not an option, or they have a non-financial motive. So why don't we just kill one of these girls and see how you react? And the old man goes, no, I don't care. The human trafficker goes up to one of the girls, takes out the gun, puts it to her head. The old man stands up and goes, wait. The human trafficker goes, your FBI turns, shoots the old man in the head. The old man falls over. And then he stands up, boom, Superman symbol. This looks like a job for Superman. It was Clark, he's in old man makeup, he's undercover working for Batman, and he demolishes the traffickers, throwing them through walls, laser vision off hands, he wrecks the place. All the girls who were being trafficked end up out somewhere in the street. In Qatar, they split because Superman is destroying the building. That's when Robin shows up. What is wrong with you? He was, he was going to no, kill No, he girl. wasn't. We have been psychologically profiling this guy for months, Superman. Months. Do you know what you just did? Do you know how much work you just wasted by attacking him? Well, I thought I was doing the right thing because he was, um, you know, Robin, he was going to kill this, this girl. And so I'm super- He wasn't gonna kill the girl, it was a test, Clark. Oh my God. Now we have to find each of those girls individually. Do you know how long that will take? Hours. Let's clarify some things. 
after that mess in Metropolis where Superman got his ass kicked by Lobo and only barely won, Batman reached out. We can't have the most powerful man on earth telegraphing his punches. What is your training? How many languages do you speak? Clark is like, uh, un poquito de español? Batman is like, this is not working for me. So Batman offers Superman a compromise. He will train him to become the ultimate superhero. He gives him a new suit. He gives him all the equipment. Batman is teaching Clark breathing techniques, fighting styles, tactics, everything you would need to know to be Superman. Because he can't just keep flying in to disaster areas and helping people. Initially, Clark was like, why not? That's what I want to do. I don't want to fight criminals. Batman's like, you haven't been culturally normalized yet. But the second you are, the second Superman becomes part of the status quo, and you can't be everywhere, people will begin to resent you. And every time someone looks up into the sky and you're not there, it will turn into a little bit of hate. And eventually the world will hate you, Superman. Clark is like, I don't, I don't want to be hated by the world, so okay, Batman, let's do it. Of course, as we've seen, this is fucking him up at work. This is fucking up his relationship. And also, Clark is not a good spy. He's, that's not his skill set. Clark is a reporter. He went to college for journalism. Of course he's going to start lasering things and fucking up. So Batman and Superman have a lot of tension in this partnership. And all of that is being funneled through Robin. It's worth talking for a minute about Robin here because Dick Grayson is now 18 and his relationship with Batman and Superman has kind of changed in some important ways. Spending this much time with Clark has made Dick realize that he has no friends his own age. In fact, he has no friends. Sure. Batman sends him to parties for Instagram, but at the parties he is instructed to not make friends, not get laid, and behave as Bruce Wayne does. That is to say, charming and yet a little bit boring and stupid, but not stupid enough to be funny. Dick is sick of this. He's a warm, funny guy. Even though Clark is frustrating on these missions, he likes him. Dick has like no positive male role models in his life, just a butler and a guy who dresses up as a bat and beats the shit out of people. He's a little worn down. After the failed mission, they get milkshakes on the top of the Burj Khalifa. Now, up on the top of the Burj Khalifa, Superman sends pictures to his mom because Martha will be like, you're in Dubai, that's incredible. But Robin's pretty frustrated. Clark's been doing good in his training, but this is the fifth mission he's fucked up in some way. And Batman has asked to speak to him. Now, this is a big deal. Clark actually hasn't been allowed to talk to Batman since this arrangement started. He only goes through Robin. Except Batman doesn't invite Superman to the Batcave. He invites Clark and Lois to Wayne Manor. Superman is like, Haha, but I'm actually having a lot of issues with my girlfriend because you've been making me fly all around the world and keep a bunch of secrets. And Batman is like, I don't talk to you, talk to Robin, I'll see you at night. Lois and Clark drive to Gotham. Just keep in mind, she does not know he is Superman and he has been very absent and seemingly partying with a young billionaire's son. Something weird is going on and Lois is not a stupid person. So the drive to... Uh, Wayne Manor is a little bit like this. Are you mad at me? No, Clark, I'm not mad at you. It's not a, it's not a good vibe. They get to Wayne Manor and Bruce Wayne has set out this giant table for them. And it turns out Bruce is more interested in talking to Lois than he is to Clark. You see, Bruce thinks the hysteria about Batman has gone far enough. People need to trust the system. What we need is someone to thoroughly debunk the Batman myth before it gets any more out of control. Bruce also thinks this whole Superman thing may be a conspiracy. I mean, 
How could someone with no mask keep their identity secret? A big and hilarious part of what Batman is doing for Superman is helping to make this disguise work. You see, every day, Batman's algorithms delete thousands, tens of thousands of cell phone videos, cell phone pictures, and posts about Superman from the internet. Meanwhile, LexCorp is convinced that Superman has a secret identity, so they are spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to collect those pictures before they're erased. What this has led to is a ridiculously fragile situation in which two of the most powerful companies on Earth are in an invisible chess match to hide the identity of one guy. Lois is really annoyed by Bruce Wayne. She thinks he comes across as fake and all of his blowing Batman out of the water stuff doesn't go good over her. In fact, she loses her temper. And when Lois loses her temper, stuff can slip out. Lois says, no, uh, Mr. Wayne, Bruce, the Batman is definitely a real person. In fact, I suspect he's an extremely wealthy individual living in or around Gotham City. Someone with vast resources, possibly a military supplier. Someone with incredible training, years and years of it. I'm talking about a huge amount of dedication and diligence to creating the image of an unstoppable monster. But I assure you, the Batman is human, and I know his name. The Batman's name is Matches Malone. Skirt! Let's slow it down for the people who aren't big, 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 big ass comic book fans like me. Matches Malone is the fake identity Bruce Wayne, as Batman, uses to go undercover in Gotham's crime syndicate. She has correctly ascertained that Matches Malone is Batman. That means she's two sentences away from figuring out that Matches Malone is Bruce Wayne, which means she knows Bruce Wayne is Batman in a month if he doesn't do something. Bruce is like, Matches Malone, is that a baseball player? Meanwhile, you look at fucking Dick Grayson, Dick Grayson looks like this. Bruce Wayne is a douchebag. We're talking Dan Bilzerian. He is not a cool, nice guy. So he's a complete misogynist prick to Lois. He minimizes her discovery of Matches Malone. He says that that person probably doesn't exist and says that he has no interest in discussing it further. Not only that, he plays Clark and Lois against each other. So that tension is boiling over. So that by the time they leave and they go back to the fucking motel, Lois is fucking fuming. She is furious. Clark didn't stick up for her at all. She feels like he is a beta bitch. A doofus who is never around, keeps secrets, lies to her, spends all his time partying with Bruce Wayne's son, and then leaves her high and dry to get lambasted by an idiot at a fucking million dollar dinner table. Fuck you, Clark. Clark, meanwhile, is between a rock and a hard place. Like, what, what the fuck is he supposed to do? He can't confirm that he knows Batman is Bruce Wayne. If he does that, the jig is up. But he also can't fucking lay down and let Lois walk all over him. Lois gives Clark an ultimatum. She goes, listen, I know you are keeping secrets from me. At least one secret. If you can be honest with me right now, if you can clear it right now, I believe we'll be okay. Clark says, I, I don't have a secret. I don't have a secret, Lois. I don't, I don't have a secret. Lois says, Clark, I know your secret. You think I'm stupid? You disappear every time Superman's around. Every time we do a story on him, where's Clark? Somewhere else. You have PTSD about Superman. You are damaged and you need help, Clark. You're afraid of Superman. And Clark laughs. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a really serious fight with your girlfriend, but a thing you don't wanna do is laugh. Lois is like, bye. She drives home and leaves him there. And Batman basically steps out of the bathroom. Hello, Clark. What the fuck, you were here the whole time? Of course, Batman has this room bugged. Of course, he's been following Lois Lane. She's much too close. Lois has dumped Clark. Clark is spinning out, but that's okay because Batman has another job for him. And this one should take his mind off all of these small problems. Batman doesn't care about Clark's life. 
Batman badly wants Clark to shed the Clark Kent identity and become Superman full time. Batman lives as Batman full time and sometimes he dresses up as Bruce Wayne. For Clark, the Superman costume is just a costume. Batman needs that to change. So he sends Clark to the Arctic Circle. Arriving at the docks to go to the Arctic Circle on a chartered ship, Clark finds Pete Ross, his childhood and adult best friend. Pete, what are you doing here? I thought you were in Smallville. No, Clark, you will never believe this, but someone chartered a $4 million job on my dad's old boat. Wait, are you the passenger? Yeah, fucking Pete, this is, this is Superman shit. Batman chartered this boat. Robin, who's with him, you know, Dick Grayson is like, oh. Pete Ross is like, what? For real? Clark is like, yeah, Batman is Bruce Wayne. Robin is like, ahem, what the fuck? Clark is like, shut up, Robin. Pete, you can't be here. Whatever's in the Arctic Circle that Batman sent me to get, it's dangerous. It's been killing people. Pete's like, Clark, you're seriously gonna lock me out of this part of your life for the rest of our lives? Like, let me do it. I'm not doing anything. I just got divorced. I'm in debt. This is a huge opportunity for me. Just let me go with you and this very weird and handsome kid to the Arctic Circle and just let me have a purpose for once in your life, Clark. I haven't helped you since we were kids. Pete starts breaking down. Clark's like, oh shit. This is one of my childhood friendships and one of the many relationships in my life that being Batman's apprentice has caused me to completely neglect. Fuck. <laughs> so off they go to the Arctic Circle. Robin is, of course, in a pretty intense situation here. He's trapped on a boat at the behest of his father between two fighting best friends. But as the trip goes on and Pete and Clark relax, Robin begins to experience something he's literally never experienced, which is hanging out with positive male role models. Clark and Pete swap stories about their dads, and Robin has the awkward realization that he has no fun stories about Bruce Wayne. All of the stories involve training, and he begins to understand in this weird way that even though he's this super privileged, rich, white, handsome kid, he sort of has Stockholm Syndrome and has maybe been raised to be a child soldier by a fundamentalist. It doesn't feel good. Clark talks to him and says, surely you must have someone to talk to this about, right, Robin? And Robin goes, that man doesn't have friends. Those freaks we keep putting in Arkham, those are the only people he can relate to. You know, when Bruce Wayne adopted me, it was the best day of my life. But I don't actually know if I've had a good day since then. And Clark is like, you need to think about it as you inspiring people. You know, you're protecting people. That makes people feel safe and good. And Dick Grayson, Robin is like, no, Clark, that's what you do. Batman doesn't inspire anything but fear. And he's training me to be another Batman. He's training you to be another Batman. So get this inspire people shit out of your head. Clark is like, I thought we were friends. I thought we were getting tight. You can talk to me like your friend. You don't have to talk to me like I'm Superman. So Dick has a few more drinks and he just lets it out. He goes, I'm gonna tell you something and you cannot tell Batman. It's the only secret I have from him. I'm dating Batgirl. Clark is like, there's a Batgirl? <laughs> Robin is like, yeah, but don't tell anyone there's a Batgirl. She's very real and we're in a relationship and Batman is considering training her. So you just have to keep this secret, but I feel so good to say it. I think I'm in love with her. Clark is like, really? This is nuts, holy shit, congratulations. They get fucking shwasty wasty and have a brilliant time on the boat. As a writer, I love to write Superman being drunk on boats. They reach the Arctic Circle and Robin does a sonar ping to find that there's something giant beneath them. There have been 12 ships sunk in this area, all whaling vessels. Clark goes into the water and deep down beneath it, he sees Earlier. Not Atlantis, Perlier. That's right, the hidden city of Cthulhu. 
We're in Lovecraft country now, my friends. And up from the ancient oceans of Erlie, in the depths of madness, comes a figure. It's Aquaman. Bam! My version of Aquaman is stronger than Superman underwater. He's faster than Superman underwater. And Clark gets the fucking floor wiped with him. He is thrown around like a rag doll. They trash half of this ruined city. And fucking Aquaman traps him in a compression chamber and nearly kills Clark, who almost drowns. He can't fucking breathe underwater. But when Aquaman comes up, to get that little boat with Pete Ross, he encounters Robin. Robin dives into the water, attaches rapid expanding balloons to Aquaman, dragging him up out of the water. Aquaman is powerless up out of the water. It's basically his kryptonite. Here comes Pete, wham, with the shovel, American Alien issue two. Pete on that shovel shit, right in the head. Aquaman is unconscious. Clark makes it to the surface like, oh, glad to see you guys handled the Aquaman situation. He's very rattled. He has never encountered another superpowered being from Earth. Clark has fallen into this like weird silence. He has a black eye and a bloody nose. He doesn't know how to react. Robin begins interrogating Aquaman, who they have locked up in this crazy containment thing, almost like a tube full of Aquaman. Like he's got him in a little ocean coffin like that. Robin's like, who are you? Aquaman's like, my name is Arthur Curry, and I serve a god older than time itself. Humanity is a stain on this planet that corrupts everything it touches. I have the abilities of a god. Why should I be ruled by the laws of man? Under what possible jurisdiction could you imprison me? You have come to my territory, and you are trying to tell me I can't rule as a god? When I can kill any man on Earth? When I could reshape this planet into anything I want? I don't care about human lives. There will be no consequences. You cannot stop me. No one can. I am a ruler of the ocean. Arthur Curry doesn't like hurting people, but it's part of his ideology. And he doesn't seem prepared to hear otherwise. He's not crazy, but he is very, very bad. Robin begins preparations to seal the top of the coffin and bring him back to the Batcave where Batman has built a special containment unit. Clark has been silent this entire time. During all of Arthur's ranting and arguing with Robin and Pete, he takes his hand, he puts it on the containment unit and shoom, up into the sky, 40,000 feet, almost sub-atmospheric. He's holding Aquaman like this. Arthur Curry is like, ah, 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 ah. Clark is like, listen to me. Listen to me, man, please, listen to me. And Aquaman sees that Superman is crying. Arthur is like, oh, oh God, oh God, I can see the curvature of the earth. Just listen to me. You need to not be this way, man. You can't be talking about it's okay to kill human beings and I'm a God and all this shit, because if that's really what you believe, I have to drop you and kill you right now because otherwise Batman is gonna take you and he's gonna put you in this thing and he's gonna keep you there forever. You're the first other superpowered human I've met, okay? You're the first one in my whole life. So I need you not to be crazy. My girlfriend left me. I have no friends who have superpowers. You're it, man. You need to not kill any more people. You need to promise me that right now and I'll be your friend and I'll do whatever I can to help you protect the oceans or whatever you want, but I don't want to have to kill you. So please, 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 please. Aquaman is like, what? Clark is like, my name is Clark Kent. I I'm from Kansas. This is my email. Here's my phone number. Please don't kill anyone else. Please just be my friend and I'll let you go. Arthur's like, okay, deal. Please don't kill me. Clark is like, okay, but you know, if you kill any more people, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna take you up here and then I'm gonna drop you. And I'm gonna drop you in the fucking Himalayas, man. Arthur is like, okay, just calm down. Your girlfriend left you, I'm sorry. Clark is like, I know, I don't know. She's so out of my league. And I just thought I was so lucky. And then I've been dealing with this fucking asshole, Bruce Wayne. Arthur Curry is like, Batman is Bruce Wayne? Clark is like, ah, oh, shit, fuck. He takes Aquaman back down to the boat. He goes, Robin, let him go. Dick is like, what are you talking about? This man is a murderer. 
We cannot let him go. Clark is like, let him go right now. He has promised me he won't kill anyone else. He's more important as an ally than he is as some sort of trophy on Batman's wall. Robin is like, no. Superman is like, okay. And tears the thing off of Aquaman, lets him jump in the water. Robin is looking at Clark like, <laughs> Pete Ross is looking at Clark like, oh, fuck yeah. Batman's gonna be super pissed at you, bro. Is he really a vampire? Tensions are insanely high as they head back into Gotham, and it's not being made any better by the fact that as night falls, there's this weird thing going on where they can't get in touch with Batman. They can't access any of the secret Bat channels, sending him secret Bat messages doesn't work. Even Bruce Wayne's cell phone is turned off. And when they arrive back at the Bat Cave, Alfred isn't there. Clark notices he has like 41 missed calls from Lois Lane. He calls her. Hey, Lois, I, I saw you were calling me. Yes, idiot, where are you? Are you with Dick Grayson? Yeah, I'm with Dick Grayson. Oh, are you in Gotham? Yeah. Lois says, listen to me, Clark, and listen good. Tonight is very important. I need you at Gotham General Hospital right now. Somebody shot Barbara Gordon. <laughs> oh, you thought I wasn't gonna do the killing joke from Superman's perspective? Mawi wa! Ya wawi wa! My wife, it's Borat. Uh, for those who don't know the killing joke, the killing joke is a seminal Batman graphic novel which redefined Batman in the 1980s as a dark and gritty superhero. But I'll tell it like you haven't read it. I got your back. So, here we go. Clark says, we gotta go to the hospital. Dick's like, why, what's wrong? Clark's like, we just have to go right now. I'll fly you there, okay? The entire city is in lockdown. There have been multiple heists. The entire police force is searching for James Gordon, the police commissioner who has gone missing. Batman is nowhere in sight and there's rumors that the Joker is on the street. Dick is like, Clark, what's going on? Clark is like, someone shot Commissioner Gordon's daughter. Dick is like, Clark is like, what's wrong? Dick is like, that's Batgirl. That's Batgirl, that's my girlfriend. Clark is like, oh fuck. <laughs> so it's beginning to rain in Gotham. The entire police force is occupied with dozens of break-ins. There are supervillains all over the city and Barbara Gordon goes into emergency surgery in four hours. The best spinal surgeon in the state, Dr. Lakhari is on his way, but he keeps getting delayed by all of this fucking crazy crime going on in Gotham with no Batman and no police. Dick is shutting down. He's crying, he refuses to speak, and he keeps saying, this is all his fault. Just like Harvey Dent, this is all his fault. Clark is like, there's no time for blame right now. Brings Dick into the front door, calls Lois. He says, Lois, I need you to meet me on the roof. Lois walks out into the roof in the windy, rainy Gotham night and sees Superman float down towards her. She goes, Superman. Clark says, it's me. It's Clark. She goes, Clark, why are you dressed as Superman? And then she goes, oh my God. He goes, I'm Superman. I'm an alien. I was raised by humans. Dick Grayson is Robin. Barbara Gordon is Batgirl. Batman is Bruce Wayne. Please tell me what to do, Lois. I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. Lois is like. So, right. Huge fucking moment here. Except for Lois just rolls right through it because she's fucking Lois Lane and she has her shit together. So here we go. Lois has actually been flown in to Gotham General by Lex Luthor, who gave her a private helicopter flight with his bodyguard, Mercy. I don't know if you know about Mercy, but she's a badass kung fu fucking, fucking awesome. Mercy's awesome. She's very, very cool. Just, uh, just, go, just Google her. I don't know, man. It's a good Superman character. People don't talk about like how many good Superman characters. Lois says, Clark, here's what I need you to do. I'm going to give you my police transponder. You're going to put it in your ear and you're going to respond to all these supervillains in Gotham City right now. I'm going to hold the fort down here. 
She takes Dick Grayson, she walks him to the trauma counselor at the hospital who comes up to them, very nice lady. She says, I'll talk to you. And Dick says, there are things I can't tell you. She goes, I understand. You knew Barbara Gordon? And he says, yes, I did. He's going into shock and feeling a lot of painful things. Lois goes to check on the status of this surgeon. If Barbara doesn't get surgery soon, she's gonna lose the use of her legs. Not good. Meanwhile, Superman stops a bank robbery, stops a riot, and then comes to this weird setup on one of the bridges outside of Gotham. There's all of these big green sort of towers that have been installed, and standing atop one of the pylons of the bridges is a man in a green suit and a green hat. Superman, what an unexpected delight. Two juggernauts, you in strength, me in intellect. I am the Superman ghost. I know who you are. You're Edward Nigma. you're the Riddler. You were put in Arkham Asylum three times. I know exactly who you are. What is this? The Riddler's like, oh, okay. Well, uh, as you can see, I've set up acid bombs at three points on this bridge. If you cannot figure out my riddle involving the lineage of kings in Egypt, then you will, Superman goes, I can't do that. There's all these people on the bridge listening to this confrontation, stuck there because the city's in lockdown. Superman's like, sorry, sorry, everyone. Turns to Edward Nigma and goes like this. Listen, Mr. Nigma, I know you're a genius. I'm not a genius. Keep in mind, this is Superman floating against a thunderstorm saying this, just sort of whispering to Riddler. Listen, I know you're a genius. I'm not a genius. I don't know the lineage of the Egyptian kings. I don't know how to deactivate these bombs. That means the only option I have is just to kill you right now. And I don't wanna do that because I know you're a genius and I know you're sick. I've read your psychological profiles. I wanna help you. Riddler is like, you dare to condescend to the, no, 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 listen to me. Listen to me, Mr. Enigma. I am not condescending to you. The entire police force is occupied. Someone I care about is at the hospital right now. I, I need this not to be happening. So please, Riddler, if there is any way we can do this without having me having to kill you or having to solve the riddle, let's just do that. The Riddler's like... So you, you admit I defeat you? Yes, 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 you win, you win. He turns to everybody on the bridge. The Riddler beats Superman. I cannot figure this out. Please, please. You're begging me? Superman is begging the Riddler for mercy? Yes, Superman begs the Riddler to take cell phone pictures. I don't care, Riddler beats Superman. Superman is like, I cannot contend with the vast scale of your intelligence. Can we call it? And Riddler's like, Ooh. The bombs are deactivated. Superman's like, thank you. And Superman hugs Riddler. He takes him and goes, Listen, Mr. Nigma, I'm having a really hard night. You can't understand how much I appreciate this. The Riddler's like, okay. Superman's like, okay, get rid of the acid bombs. I have to go. Back at the hospital, Dick is in with the crisis counselor. He's like venting about what it feels like to be in a secret relationship. He's not bringing up, you know, Robin and Batgirl, but he is talking about Dick and Barbara. He's really scared that he feels responsible for this. He feels terrible. Now she might be paralyzed. And the, crisis counselor is being very understanding. The crisis counselor says, listen, in moments like this, sometimes a little levity helps. Do you want to hear a joke? And Dick goes, what? And the crisis counselor says, it's a joke about Barbara Gordon. So Barbara Gordon loses her leg. She's paralyzed from the waist down. Dick is like, what? The crisis counselor is like, she's on the beach. And three men walk up to her on the beach. And one of them says, have you ever been hugged before? And Barbara Gurdon says, no, my legs don't work. No one will love me. The crisis counselor says, so the man gives her a hug. The next man says to Barbara Gordon, have you ever been kissed before? Barbara Gordon says, no, no one's ever kissed me. I'm just a little crippled. Dick is like, who the fuck are you? The crisis counselor is like, let me finish. So he gives Barbara Gordon a kiss. And then the third man says, I bet you've never been fucked before. And Barbara Gordon says, no, I've never been fucked before. And the man says, well, you're fucked now, cripple. The tide's coming in. Dick stands up looking at the crisis counselor. The crisis counselor says, you know, Mr. J said that I was just supposed to kill the princess. 
But if I get the princess and you a prince, then it's like a fairy tale. It's Harley Quinn. Oh shit. Huge fight. Fucking Harley gets Dick immediately in the shoulder with a knife. Lois bursts in and now Lois is fighting with Harley Quinn. Not equipped to do this. This is Harley's first night as a supervillain and she's fucking crazy. Knives all over the place. Mercy, baby. It's Lex Luthor's bodyguard versus Joker's girlfriend. Bam, bam. Mercy breaks Harley's leg, breaks her jaw, and then she is detained by Sergeant Harvey Bullock. Robin is even more fucked up, and then arriving at the hospital is Dr. Laghari, ready to do surgery. He's a very sweet, very composed man. He reassures Lois, he reassures Harvey Bullock. They head up to surgery. He begins to scrub up. Clark gets back. He says, okay, I think I dealt with all the relevant crimes. Dr. Laghari walks into the room. Clark sees Dr. Laghari and goes, what the fuck is that? Why would Clark react like that? He's just a normal man. Lois stares at Dr. Laghari and then looks at Clark. Clark goes, what is that? What is that thing? At the spinal surgeon. Lois says, Clark, what's going on? All of a sudden, the spinal surgeon's face starts to ripple. How did you know? How did you know? Wait, wait. The spinal surgeon's face changes into Clark's face. You're Superman. It's Clayface. Clayface explodes into that big ass monster form in the room, wrecks Lois, attacks Clark. It's Superman versus Clayface. And by the way, no one is there to operate on Barbara, which means she loses the use of her legs. Not a good night for DC Comics. Superman and Clayface brawl out of the hospital into Gotham Bay. Clark is faced with an impossible choice. This villain now knows his secret identity. He cannot be allowed to leave. He makes the call. Superman fries Clayface in Gotham Bay, turning him into a mix of sludge and statue. And then he shatters the statue. Superman kills Clayface to protect his identity. I mean, fairly big moment, but he had to do it, right? I mean, surely doing that won't have unforeseen consequences, but... So, dawn over Gotham. Clark and Dick head to the Batcave. Dick's still silent, now he's injured. Clark is not vibing, in a bad place, just fought crimes all night, super stressed out, had to come out as Superman to his girlfriend. His new friend Dick got attacked at the hospital and he had to kill someone. So Clark's not really in a great place either. They arrive at the Batcave to find Batman soaking wet and at a level we have not seen him. The Gotham City Police say they had to pry Batman off Joker, that he was choking him after Joker drugged and tortured Commissioner Gordon. Clark's first question to Batman is, are you okay? Batman says, why should you care, murderer? Clark is like, what? You crossed the line. You've been out of control since I tried to take you under my wing. You are a problem. You allowed Aquaman to go free. You murdered Clayface. You negotiated with Riddler. You are not equipped mentally or emotionally to be Superman. This is over. Newsflash, hey, Batman, you didn't invent Superman. I did. I was working for you because I thought you had things to teach me. But ever since I joined up with you, things have only gotten worse. You just got a young girl shot. Why haven't you stopped Joker? And then you try to kill him? Are you joking? You're the one who's out of control. You think this is a debate? I'm telling you how it is. Press is a button. You know that Superman suit? Batman made Superman? It's laced with kryptonite. Ah! Superman down on the ground. Batman says, Robin, pick him up. I built a containment unit for him. Superman is not necessary. Robin goes, no. Batman's like, excuse me, excuse, excuse, what, what the fuck did you, what? Robin's like, no, I refuse. No way. Barbara's paralyzed, Bruce. Barbara is an innocent victim of a crime. That has nothing to do with me. Dick is like, the Joker has nothing to do with you? Batman is like, the Joker is a criminal. 
Superman is a criminal. And if you don't help me get this man to the containment cell before he recovers, then you're a criminal too. Uh, Batman, you're the criminal. You have more money and resources than the Joker. You're gonna imprison this guy because he disobeyed you? I don't think so. Robin, you are in direct conflict with my orders. You are violating our code. Robin is like, cool, because I quit. Mask off on the ground. Dick says, Clark and I are leaving and you are not gonna try to stop us. Batman looks at him and says, Mr. Grayson, you think I don't have a containment cell for you too? Dick Grayson is like, oh fuck. Okay, here we go. I taught you everything you know, not everything I know. Dick Grayson is like, well, that's cute, Bruce. You think you're my only teacher? No! Batman versus Robin. It's fucking awesome. There's only so much I can do with words to paint the fucking Neo versus Morpheus fucking kung fu fucking sick ass born identity style bat cave wrecking fight that this is. I mean, like, I just want you to imagine the coolest John Wick choreography you have in your head and then just like put them in Batman and Robin costumes and then like make it better than that because that's what I'm aiming for. Yeah, boom, boom. These guys are beating the fuck out of each other. Master and Apprentice, Darth Vader versus fucking Luke. It's fucking awesome. Batman is winning until Superman uses one of the breathing exercises that Batman taught him to get that fucking suit and ba ba da ba Superman's butt ass naked fucking pins Batman to the wall with one finger. Batman tries to move, he can't. Tries all his gadgets, it's American Alien all over again. Does nothing. You're a murderer and a criminal. You're an alien with no place on this planet. You don't deserve to be Superman. Superman has Batman pinned and he goes, you know what I don't see in you, Bruce? Gratitude. Yes, the world took something from you, but it gave you more than it gives to almost anything else. People would kill to be Bruce Wayne. You are selfish and you are greedy. You take everything you have for granted. You don't have anybody. You're such a tragic figure. Who's Alfred? He's your father. Who's Dick? He's your son. And you don't appreciate any of it. I tried to be your friend, but that's over. Batman is like, I will control you. You can't hide. I'll always be watching. And all Superman goes, shut the fuck up, Bruce. You are just a man and you follow the laws of men but I am more than a man, I am a god. And if you defy me again, you will suffer the wrath of God. Clark takes his finger off of him. Batman falls down from the fight with Robin, exhausted. He fought Joker in the carnival and the killing joke earlier tonight. This dude is emotionally and mentally defeated. Dick gets Superman, who's still all fucked up from the kryptonite. They limp out of Wayne Manor. As they're walking out, Dick says to Clark, you're a god? and he'll suffer the wrath of God. Clark is like, I don't know, I was just trying to freak him out. Do you think it worked? Do you think all this stuff about like, you're not grateful, do you think it worked? And Dick's like, yeah, he let us leave. And Clark is like, oh, my girlfriend's gonna be fucking furious at me. Two months later, Lois Lane interviews the Joker in Arkham Asylum. He gives a unique perspective. If you don't mind if I just break character for a moment and speak honestly, not as the Joker, but as myself, the real me, the artist behind the art. Of course, Joker, whatever you want. Well, if someone doesn't kill me soon, society is gonna fall apart. You know, I can go on the news next time I break out and I can say the government created me. I can say, don't trust the mass media and look at me. People will believe me, okay? Batman is not a sustainable project for humankind. Superman is not a sustainable figure in human culture. The Joker shouldn't exist. And yet here I am, 
And now there's a Riddler and a Scarecrow? Lex Luthor commits crimes out in public and people love him. Human culture is hitting a nexus point where if this isn't wrapped up soon, there are going to be superheroes and supervillains everywhere. And normal people, people like you, are going to be caught in between. We will be living in a world of gods and monsters. And I personally find that not very funny at all. Lois is like, damn it. In the Gulf of Mexico, where there's about to be a massive spill on an overheating oil platform, Aquaman appears and saves 250 lives, as well as preventing a major ecological disaster. He disappears without saying a word. Dick Grayson's living in Metropolis, doesn't talk to Bruce. One night he's talking to Clark, who's been very hesitant to be Superman again. And he says to him, you know, the world can live without Robin, but it can't keep going this way without Superman. At work, Lois and Clark, it's a lot of tension, a lot of trust issues to be resolved. One day at work, news alert, massive flood in Uruguay, hurricane storm system came in, people dying, landing in the next two hours. It's already fucking massive flooding, crazy bad. Lois is watching all the screens and Clark comes in. She turns to Clark and she goes, Clark, aren't you sick today? Massive hurricane pouring down rain. A single mother, dog under one arm, daughter under the other, crawling up onto the roof of her house as the water level rises and rises. Cars are floating by, wreckage is floating by, a tsunami is coming. This entire area is gonna be wrecked. Other people on their roofs, frantically signaling to rescue helicopters, but no one's stopping. The evacuation is being totally mismanaged and the sky is turning black. She loses her dog and it's swept off into the water and the wreckage, dead. That dog is gone. She's trying to hold onto her daughter's hand, but her daughter goes too, into the rain, sinking under the brown and muddy water. The woman screaming and reaching out as her daughter disappears into the distance and then, from above her, a sonic boom in the clouds and then a red light that cuts straight through the storm system, disrupting the barometric pressure and essentially killing the hurricane. As the hurricane begins to split apart, the eye of the storm dissipating into beautiful sunlight cascading down through mist, a form appears. Look up in the sky. Is that wreckage? Is it a rescue helicopter? No, it's Superman floating down in a ray of heavenly light. And of course she has her daughter under one arm, but he's got the dog too. His hair is kind of long. It doesn't look great. Krypton Sun, I'm the only one Getting fucked up on this yellow sun Eyes got the red glow, now let's go Cause I'm feeling like I did a thousand lines of blow Leaping tall buildings in a single bound But I'm not coming down No, my feet won't touch the ground And pound for pound, I'm the baddest Motherfucker coming straight out of cans It's preposterous Got a lot of haters talking shit But I'm blocking it I know exactly what the problem is It's obvious They see me sit on top of this Metropolis Stuck in some 